Demonic possession is believed by some to be the process by which individuals are possessed by malevolent beings. Here are three people who have been possessed. Except I lied. Only one video that I showed you is an apparent real possession and the other two videos are of people experiencing a psychogenic seizure. The main problem that I have with demonic possessions is that if there is a point where something is so similar to a mental disorder that they cannot be differentiated then there is a deep underlying problem. According to Wikipedia, the symptoms of a demonic possession is as follows. Demonic possessions often include erased memories or personalities, convulsions and fainting. In comparison, the signs and symptoms of the mental disorder, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, or PNES, are episodes that are convulsive, which refers to the body shaking, which is already a symptom that overlaps with positions, as well as a generalized tonic-clonic. The tonic stage refers to the patient quickly losing consciousness, as well as expressing brief vocalizations like a loud moan. The clonic stage refers to rapid convulsions resulting in eyes rolling back, this could be argued as the origin of weird moan sounds that you typically hear during a possession and an explanation for fainting, which is another symptom overlap of possessions. As well as this, tonic-clonic seizures affect the entirety of the brain, resulting in confusion and total amnesia, which is an overlapping symptom with possessions. This shows that psychogenic seizures tick off every symptom of having a demonic possession, showing that what is most likely happening during supposed possessions is that people are experiencing psychogenic seizures. As well as this, other mental disorders like Tourette's, schizophrenia, conversion disorder and associative identity disorder have been identified with the symptoms of possessions, and in many cases psychologists have noted that individuals behave similarly to many of these mental disorders during possessions. In the 16th and 17th century, many people claimed that witches cursed people. In the case of the Pender witches, an encounter with the supposed witch Alison resulted in the peddler John Law falling to the ground with half of his body numb, claiming that Alison had bewitched him. Back then, the symptoms shown by John Law could have only been caused by witchcraft. But of course, 400 years later, we can identify that this man had simply suffered from a stroke. Due to the lack of science and reason and a heavy devotion to God in those days, people believed that anything that was shrouded in mystery and unexplainable was due to witchcraft. Why do we still believe that something like possessions are caused by the paranormal, instead of using logical reasoning to create an explanation, like a mental disorder like psychogenic non-epileptic seizures? In my opinion, I think that possessions are in fact psychogenic seizures, as many of the symptoms of possessions overlap with the symptoms of psychogenic seizures. The whole point of this video is not to tell you that you're wrong if you believe in possessions, but instead, you should not ignore the science of many things that are paranormal, because in the case of possessions, if it is a mental disorder, it could damage your brain long term if left untreated for a prolonged amount of time. I play Professor Sperling the footage of the man undergoing the exorcism. What I deal with is real, not. What you showed me is a textbook example of a pseudo seizure or a psychogenic seizure. Okay. Uh, typically, uh, individuals who have these have some underlying stress problem, emotional difficulty, and uh, one might view it psychologically almost as a, an escape avoidance type of behavior. The, the real world is too stressful, mm. and the patient withdraws and pulls into a separate world. I hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching.